Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Evil Tech slash IoT section. I couldn't remember what the other part was. Anyway, uh, we record these live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to come around and catch the show live, just watch out for that Terminator back there. Uh, but with that being said, let's go ahead and dive on into the news. Before we start, you can help support the channel by having a look at my affiliates page. There might be something there if you're looking for cell phone service or a grammar checker, because I'm an author as well. Uh, web hosting, VPNs, podcasting information, all that kind of stuff. You can help support the channel by using those links on that page. With that, let's go ahead and jump on into the news. I think we have IoT first. I think we have two IoT. The Ring doorbell app, Ring, is back in the news, people. Ring is making its way back to the news. This has to do with the app. So you have the app which controls everything because of course, you can't have the Ring without the Ring app. You can't do anything without the Ring app. Well, it turns out that the Ring app is completely chock full with third party data trackers. A whole lot of them. So an EFF investigation here uh, of the Ring doorbell app for Android found it to be packed with third party trackers sending out a plethora of customers personally identifiable information. Four main analytics and marketing companies were discovered to be receiving information such as the names, private IP addresses, mobile network carriers, persistent identifiers, and sensor data on the devices of paying customers. Dangers of sending even small bits of information is that analytics and tracking companies are able to combine the pieces of data together to form a unique person a picture of the individual user's device, which basically fingerprints the user. So there were a lot of different things. So we had... Um, we had Branch IO, Mix Panel, um, Apps Flyer, Facebook. Uh, I know I block uh, Mix Panel and maybe Apps Flyer in my system. If I don't have all these blocked in Facebook in my uh, uh, in my host file, I'll have to double check if uh, those are in in there now. Uh, so basically, they're doing. Um, they're basically, these are all companies that do massive, massive data analytics of individual services and things. And so we got to be really careful about these type of, uh, these type of tools and data trackers inside of your devices. And in this, literally it's tracking anything and everything you do on your phone if you have the Ring app installed. So very interesting, very fascinating. All right, uh, next, um, oh Lord, don't forget people, Fitbit was purchased by Google. Now you can set up Fitbit Pay so you can very easily and conveniently pay with your little watch. People don't do this. Don't do this. There was, of course, the case we covered a few weeks ago where I think it was I think it was in New York City. They're doing uh, like an Apple Pay thing for getting into your uh, your uh, transit things. And so what was happening is people were going in there and scanning it and something was scanning their devices multiple times and then people were getting double billed for using the subway systems. Very interesting. Um, but anyway, so... Fitbit now has, or yeah, uh, Fitbit now has their FitPay platform, so you can use it um, to purchase things utilizing that platform. People, don't do this. This is dangerous. Don't do it at all. It's kind of crazy. Um, yeah. Uh... All right. So on to uh, kind of our evil tech. So this is actually a piece discussing why it is a problem that we have these AI. Um, these AI cancer screeners are coming out. So of course, and all the AI guys are like, yeah, you guys just stop training the radiologists, all this kind of stuff. The arrogant morons is really what it is because they misunderstand a lot of the truth behind what is involved in medical science. It's a lot more than just, hey, spotting it. So what this article is looking at is many doctors are looking at some things saying, it is actually a danger if you jump in and try and treat certain cancers too early because your body might be taking care of it already. And you don't want to get in there and start doing invasive technologies when your body's already on it because you can hurt your body's immune response to what's going on. All right. So this article is a very fascinating read. I was actually kind of hooked on it. Um, but uh, it's identifying here is, um, hey, I guess this is the closest thing we're going to get to showing breasts on the channel, right? <laughs> anyway, this is uh, basically identifying some uh, potential carcinogenic things inside of, uh, inside of your breast cancer. But the doctors are looking at it saying, sure, the AI said this is cancer, but the reason we didn't flag it is because this is a nothing burger at this point in time. Because the body could be doing something with this and uh, adjusting it out. And so we have to be careful about jumping in and jumping to conclusions too soon. This is something a doctor can see that AI cannot. And so that's definitely, um, definitely something to keep in mind is that 
The AI, while it might do a good job of finding all of these tracking screens, at the same token, we don't want to give it too much power because the what's the next? To, to allow it to determine it? So it detects something like this that your body may very well be taken care of. And before you know what's going on, the machine's lopping some breasts off. Hey, you have cancer. There you go, man. It's done. Ooh, and I realized all the ladies just really insisted that. Ooh. But anyway, just be careful. Just be careful. All right. Waymo is now working with UPS to do some self-driving package delivery. Now, this is not doing anything to consumers right now because you'd still have to have a person there to start. Uh, basically, you need a person there to start on, you know, take the package out of the vehicle, pass it up. But what they're experimenting with is the distribution center to distribution center. So you have a bunch of things from one distribution center that have to go up to another one, basically allow the Waymo to do it. So the car leaves the factory completely unattended. It shows up at the next factory and the employees there will now unload the car and, and process everything. So very interesting. Um, it's getting frightening. You know, what happens when the cars decide to go rogue or, you know, somebody decides to, you know, put right in its path, put a Faraday tunnel and then clop it off and then kidnap the car, tow it up somewhere. They got no idea where their car is. It's in a Faraday cage and someone goes and takes it and robs all the stuff out of it. That'd be an interesting little thing. Kind of like those, those robotic vending machines that college campuses were experimenting with last year. And I was like, you know, this is bad. I mean, th definitely bad doing a college campus because some geek is going to abduct this thing and they're going to know how to do it without tracking it down. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's an interesting story there. I don't know. Feature story of the day, of course, we are all aware of the Boston Dynamics dogs. You know, the creepy little Boston Dynamics dogs. It's one thing to have these creepy dogs running around doing all sorts of things. What is this thing doing? Grappling hooking? Is this thing like a, a bungee jumping dog? Is that what's on the surface of this thing? It's gonna launch out into the it's gonna launch out a cord here and start doing, you know, monkey flips through the trees of this jungle. Oh, terrifying. But what's more terrifying than that is now they are opening up an SDK toolkit to allow third parties to do developing for the AI. I don't trust the lunatics in the world to control anything that robot dogs do, people. This is going to like, some hacker's going to get in there, put some cool module up. It'll be like a browser extension. You download your browser extension because it's cool. You download this thing, you put it in there, and all of a sudden... All at once, it's going to be like iRobot, right? The movie, not the book. iRobot, the movie. All of a sudden, as soon as they hit a certain level of these things in society, all of a sudden, they're all going to turn red and start doing the will of the corporate overlord. Ugh. So, yeah, third-party APIs are coming in to spot the dog, and that means third-party human beings will be able to start doing things with these dogs utilizing the API commands. <laughs> it's kind of frightening, people. Yeah, they, they, will have, they will be armed. They will have guns. Um, this one appears to have some bungee cord jumping of something. Um, I don't know what it's doing over there. So, yeah, there's... Uh, what's this one doing? Oh, this one's... Uh, this one here is climbing some, uh, climbing some rocks up there. Very frightening. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, is it a good world or a bad world when third-party random people can develop um, uh, APIs to interact with the dogs? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.